this. There we go. That's in. And just push it in. This way. I'm just going to pull on these a little bit. Wires through. All right. There we go. So there's no because it's an active pickup. We don't need to put any shielding in there or do any of that sort of stuff. All right. Let's whack some screws in. Um, should we do these up by hand rather than drill? I think we should. That's a bit. Uh, how's this size? Yeah, that's better. Okay, it's going into the timber. It wasn't uh, actually that easy to get these three and a half mil black screws either. But yeah, three mil was uh, a bit like trying to get hold of unobtaining them. There's not much, obviously, that much call for black screws and bolts, so. I might have been better off maybe going smaller silver ones, I don't know, because of these little adjustment screws that came with the pickup of silver anyway, I might have just been better off doing that. But, we shall see. My pickup ring is fairly thick. Uh, I just made it out of actual plywood, so I think it's maybe six and a half mil plywood or something. So maybe I should have uh, used something a bit thinner, but I had to make it quickly yesterday after my other ones broke. All right, well that looks like it's all screwed on. Pickups in place. So this is the black chrome jack cover plate that I'm going to use on here. Now, uh, it's already got scratches on it that I can see um, from the factory. So uh, yeah, great quality there. Anyway, it already has a jack in, uh, installed in it, but I need to change it to this one. This is the one that came with the pickup, stereo jack, uh, a bit bigger. I want to still use this nut though because it's black. Um, the problem though is it's on really tight, so I've got a socket here. I'm hoping, uh, what's this? This is a 12 mil socket which fits it. I'm just hoping though I can turn this without scratching either the nut or the jack, but it's on really tight. Okay, we got it. Did we scratch it? I don't know, a bit hard to tell. Okay, so let's get that nut off. So it's a nut and a black washer on that side. The rest of it, I don't... Okay, so the jack that I had that was attached to the jack plate has a different thread to the one that's from EMG. I'm assuming it's an American thing that this American one, EMG is American made, I think. California, Santa Rosa, okay. Is probably an imperial, whereas this will be metric. Why the whole world doesn't go metric? I mean, yes, it's a pain in the butt when you do the transfer. Because I was a school kid when we changed over to metric and I had to learn imperial and metric at school. And yes, it was confusing. But metric is just so much easier. Take up a bit more of that thread. Put the black washer on, which does fit. So unfortunately we're going to have that thread sticking out a little bit. And it's going to have a silver nut. Oh, so now, <laughs> my metric uh, socket won't fit. So I'm just wondering, right, is there some like super powerful tool lobby that won't allow Americans to change to metric because they sell double the number of tools because you've got to buy metric and imperial tools? 
Is that what it is? Is it some sort of a... Oh no, we've got to keep our trade in tools economy going <laughs> by making everyone buy a set of each rather than just one set of metric tools. Okay. Alright, so that looks about right. And I think it fits in okay and doesn't touch anything. Oh, you can see I've carved out a space in here for that jack and I'm hoping you can see it but it's just been just enough room where I carved some special holes for the jack to fit in so once the actual once you actually plug it in it'll sort of just make it so the next thing I want to do is install the pots the volume and tone pots uh, obviously they're going to go there I'm going to have my and these are the knobs I've got for it obviously they're going to look like that I'm going to have the volume this one so that if I'm playing and I want to change the volume I can just use my little finger and, and turn it Yeah, that looks good. Just try and hold it on, the, keep it on that angle. Cool. So I watched a video of somebody installing EMG pickups, and um, I'll move that a little bit. And talking about how to tell the difference between the volume and the tone pot, so that you know. Yeah, which goes where and all that. They went into some very intricate way of determining how you can tell. Um, I found it easiest way is that this one says tone and the other one says volume. So that's how you tell. <laughs> so yeah, I, I watched this guy's video and just thought, uh, it's written on it? Anyway. Other than that, he did a good video. So let's put that in there. My dog's going crazy. Why isn't that fitting? That is. Okay, good. Put their washer on. So I'm not using... Uh, they supplied two nuts and uh, for each one, but I'm not using the one on the bottom because my top's fairly thick. It's about six millimeters, I think, at the moment. Thick. Five to six. Somewhere around there. Five and a half, maybe. And uh, so I'm just I'm putting the washer, the spring washer on the other side, but I'm not putting a nut under it because then I won't have enough thread. I could go in and drill underneath to you know make it thinner and everything. Okay. Yep, that's what we wanted. Cool, well, they're in. So according to my wiring diagram for one pickup with a tone and volume control. The pickup wire, one of the red ones goes to the battery bus, which is already plugged into it. And that will go to the battery connection, which I haven't plugged in yet. But the the rest of the, the other white wire goes to the volume control, and it's the bottom two, away from the word volume. They've even written the word volume on this image here. You can see it in fine print there, so you know exactly where the pins go. Like if it's, is it the top two pins or the bottom two? You can tell. You can tell from the orientation of the circle part, but it's also got the word there. Like these are really good instructions. They're very detailed, and they give you more than one way to tell if you're doing it correctly. That's pretty damn good. The volume. It's the middle two. I'm just going to put that on there now. And that's all the way on. And that connects to the tone. Also the middle two, or the top two anyway. So my only complaint would be, at the moment, they give you too much wire. Well, too much wire for this particular build, but it's great they give you that much wire. So white wire goes to T, which is this one. And black wire goes to S. S for stereo? I don't know. Signal? I'm 
guess if you want to make really sure you could solder these on. <laughs> now, will it fit back in here with all the wires attached? Yes, it will. I guess we can screw that down now. So the idea with this is I've put one of these Velcro dots into the cavity, just here. And now I'm going to put a couple of these spongy ones onto the actual battery. I want the battery to sit that way so the wires from the connector come out this way. Otherwise I'll hit the side there. So I need a, one of these sort of under here on the battery. Now that will probably push the battery into the top where it might rattle. So I'm going to put this up towards the back, about there. Um, I don't know about the sides. I did make them wider so there would be room, but it was really hard to get this in. So I'm just going to do it like this for now. And see if we can squeeze this in again. It's probably going to be even harder now. I've got that bit of padding down there. Okay, that's it. It's in. It's stuck to the Velcro. Just can go here like this. Hopefully we can push it on without the battery moving too much out of the way. Good. It did start to come off the Velcro there, but there is a notch cut into this where it will hit. So it shouldn't be able to, yeah, you can't push it back any further than that anyway. So the bridge I'm installing onto this is a Shella. Uh, it's called a 3D6. Um, Shella 3D6, black chrome, non-trim bridge, black. There you go. Uh, once again, very impressed with the quality. I have obviously looked at it before. And um, yeah, like it, it has this spacer plate here on the bottom, which I've taken off. When, when I first got it, I had trouble getting it off. I couldn't work out what it was until I realized it was just a bit of oil. It was suction holding it on because the two surfaces fit so well together, there's just no gap. And I can you can see here, where this has been machined and sanded flat so that this will fit perfectly to it. It also has a couple of little notches here which fit in and when you put them in it almost clips in like it's such a good fit. Now I don't think I'm going to use that plate, I'm pretty sure I won't have to but it's good to know that it's there if I need it. I Actually, I might show this in case you are installing one. It's going to hopefully not be too hard to see on a black bridge. But basically, the screws are here. So you just use a flat screwdriver, and then you'll undo these. Pull, the, pull that out, pull the spring out. Now, you do have to be a little bit careful. Each uh, These are unique to, I'm not sure about each string, but definitely the three top bottom strings and three top strings are different. So. The groove in this wheel, it uses a, a roller for the wire to run in. Uh, as you can see, it's fairly narrow. Hopefully you can see it. I don't know how good the lighting is. But hopefully hopefully you can see that. Whereas on the uh, thicker ones, it's a bigger groove. So these three strings have a different size groove to these three strings. Uh, also, you notice they curve the other way, so you can't accidentally mix them up. These curve this way, these curve this way. So, yeah. So I've taken that one out and now I just have to take this one out so I can access that hole. The little, the little screws on here are obviously to adjust the string height. Uh, but you also have the front of the bridge here is also staggered, height wise anyway. I have obviously already pre-positioned this so now it's just a matter of doing up the screws and that should center it all up for us. I'll need a bit of a bigger screwdriver for that. A little stubby friend here should do it.
just a matter of uh, screwing these suckers back in. All right, so I've put the bridge in. Um, it's looking pretty good now with the black hardware on, I think. But I have a problem. Oh, that out of the way. Now that I have got it on, I'm just checking it. And I'm putting this on the frets here. And um, now these are currently wound all the way down, but I've got a big gap here. I've got a gap of must be at least five millimeters. So I definitely will have to put the plate in underneath. Um, I was hoping I wouldn't have to put the plate in when I originally set this up. So I've made a mistake somewhere. Either my top is too thick, I've done some, or too thin. I've done something wrong in my calculations. Lucky this is a test build. Um, so I'm definitely going to need to um, put the base plate underneath and then hope and pray that with the base plate on, I've got enough height. Go on here. Uh, it's just touch. It's touching the string wheel. It has to lift up to go over the string hole, string wheel. So the string height at the moment is about the same height as the fretboard. Hopefully, I have enough height adjustment in here to get the strings high enough where it'll be playable. All right, it's time now to fit the cavity plate on. For those of you who haven't seen the cavity plate yet, fit it to the guitar. You're in for a treat. The combination of the yellow and yellowy orangey black with the <laughs> colours of the <laughs> cover are <laughs> hideous. But hey, it's an experimental build and that's what it's for. Here we go folks, you ready? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's just isn't it? It's is isn't it? It is. That is where we are at right now, folks. Some hardware in place, looks kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> oh man, that's, it's pretty wild. You've got to admit, it's wild. Uh, even if it is unprofessional, it's wild. Bit different. Putting in these Steinberger gearless tuners. So basically you um, use an allen key, or hex key as some people call them, under these two little screws on the side here that pulls off, take off this nut. And this little ring. Now you'll see here, there's a, I think you can see it's black, but there's a locating pin. That locating pin has to point towards the nut and on here you'll see I've drilled holes where that locating pin is. It's one eighth of an inch which is the same, it's about 1.5, 1.6 millimeters. Oh, Jesus, really have I put the locating pin in the wrong spot? I oh, know, that looks alright. It doesn't want to go in but it should go in sooner or later once I tighten it up properly. So you just pop it through, put the sleeve and the Nut back on. Let's pull them down into the like cutting pin now, it wasn't going into it before. So I, I really um, I really stuffed these holes up. I repaired this one, but this one's still absolutely terrible. So I'm not expecting these to work perfectly. And then once you've done that, you um, put the clear, clear plastic cap back on and then use the Allen key to put the knob back on. The knob's going to the bottom. Uh, I might turn it over and do that, just so you can see. Can you see that actually? Just adjust the camera a little bit here. 
This is actually off the first one I did because I haven't put that back on yet. So it's just got like a little ring where the, the two little nuts fit into. And this is of course how you uh, adjust, adjust your string tension. So instead of having knobs or keys out the side, they just come straight out the bottom. You could use these on the other end of your guitar as well if you want to do a headless guitar. Which my next build might be headless and so I might uh, use these for that as well. I'm not sure yet whether I'll use these or some other method. If I do end up doing a headless. Alright, so these are now all done up. So I'll flip it over, and the camera will probably be in the wrong position. Yep, there you go. So yeah, there you have it, that's what it looks like from the front. With um, I haven't got a nut in yet. But. So, apart from the terrible head work I've done, you can see why. And this is why, using these is why I can have such a narrow head and have all the strings in line, hopefully too, when I finish that shoot. They should all line up. Thank you for watching our 14th episode. Next week we'll make a nut and put the strings on.